Hey, welcome back to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic. And in this video, I'm gonna be doing a complete teardown of this top load GE washing machine. So this video is gonna be particularly helpful in identifying the major components of this sort of GE washer and how they are installed on the washing machine. So if you find this video to be helpful, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more DIY and tinkering videos. All right, so here is the washing machine in question. This video is going to be pretty much applicable to any sort of GE top load washing machine that's been sold in the last 10 years or so. They're pretty much all the same. They look very similar to this. Um, if you're curious, that is a model number to this particular one, but they're all pretty much the same. Um, why am I doing this? Well, there's two main reasons. The number one, one reason I identified at the start is to show you how the major components of this machine are, uh, well, at least to show you what the major components are so you can identify them and how to um, install them by seeing how they're taken apart. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take apart this machine from the top and go all the way to the bottom so you'll get to see all of the major components. And the number two reason why I'm doing this is because I picked this machine up I'm actually in my neighborhood and a person complained that it was leaking water and they decided to take the angle grinder and have a look. Um, well, that is not how you access the tub on this machine. Um, if you were to watch this video, you'll know that by just pushing this machine on its back or against the wall, you get access to the bottom without having to do any sort of crazy grinding. So basically, He's made it so this machine is unfixable, so I decided to do something useful with it by taking it apart and showing you exactly what the major components are. So let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna be working from the top down, and the very first thing we'll be taking off is the console right here. This is basically the brains of the operation, so that's where the control board is. To take off the console, you just need to undo the two quarter inch screws. One, two. With those screws removed, all we need to do is grab the console from right here and push towards the wall. So there we go. And you should be able to just flip it right up. And here we have access to a lot of our major electronic components. We have the control board here. This white hose is the pressure hose that basically tells the control board exactly how much water is in the tub. This is the water valves, and this is the capacitor for the motor. So when you unplug this, you wanna make sure you take care and, nope, and don't electrocute yourself or shock yourself, I should say. The easiest way to do that is to short the two terminals together with some sort of insulated screwdriver. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just undo all the wiring so our console will be free. Next, let's just take off the water valves. There's just two screws holding it in. Then obviously you have to undo the solenoid connectors. Okay, so the next step, we're gonna be taking off the top right here. And in order to get to that, is these two quarter inch screws, one on each side. Before removing the top completely, I'm gonna take off the lid lock striker, which is right here, and the lid lock mechanism. After you've used a scraping tool to take off this portion of the lid lock mechanism, all you need to do is push on this portion right here. And as you push down, go ahead and just push it a little bit to the left and the mechanism should just pop right out. There we go. All 
All right, so the next thing we'll be removing is the agitator. So it's basically just removing this cap right there. And then you'll need a very long extension, almost 20 inches or so, to remove the 11 millimeter bolt that's down there. So in the next step, we'll be removing the inner tub. To do that, first thing we need to do is remove this skirting right here. To do that, just push down on it and pull up on these little tabs that surround the perimeter of it. All right, so the next thing we need to do is remove this tub bolt. Now this can be extremely difficult. So the best way that I found to do it is by using this extra deep 33 millimeter socket with an impact, either with an impact wrench or an impact driver. And then the key is, and hear me out on this, this bolt has to be turned in the clockwise direction to remove it. So in this case, it's in the clockwise direction to remove it and not in the counterclockwise direction as most bolts are traditionally, or the most of the, the nuts are traditionally, I should say. All right, here we go. We're ready to remove this inner tub. So we got this 33 millimeter extra deep socket on my impact right here and uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be turning it in the clockwise direction and I'll also provide a well, I'll try to provide a link to this exact same socket so you can just have one on hand they're like 15 bucks well worth it um, the only other option is using a spanner wrench but it's a, quite a headache there we go off within 30 seconds. Then we should just be able to lift the inner tub right out of there. All right, so it looks like the person was right. It was definitely leaking from the tub. It looks like something went in there and just destroyed the inner tub. I wonder if it was like a nail or something, but yeah, it's definitely gone. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this machine on his back and take off the ma major components on the bottom. All right, the first thing we'll be taking off is the drain pump, which fails on these all the time. Next, we've got the belt, which is in. After that, we've got the transmission pulley. This is a 14 millimeter bolt. Now, people sometimes complain about this not coming off easily. What you can do is you can just give it a little couple of taps with your pliers or a rubber hammer or something. All right, the next components we're going to be taking off is the shift actuator and the clutch. These components are important in shifting the washing machine from the agitate mode, which is what it does when it's washing your clothes, to the spin mode. Basically, this shifter is a little switch that pulls this clutch in and out, and as, that's, as that clutch is engaged and disengaged, the agitator is also engaged and disengaged. Next thing we'll be doing is unplugging the motor and the RPM sensor, which is attached to the motor in this case, or on this machine, I should say. It's gonna unbolt the motor. And get this wiring harness out of the way.
All right, so now we're going to undo the eight 10 millimeter bolts that hold on the transmission. Just this transmission alone is worth the price of admission for me. All right, now we're gonna stand this thing back up. All right, so the only thing left is to remove the outer tub. And in order to do that, we just need to take off the suspension rods. The only thing left is to undo the wiring harness from the tub. All right, so all we're left is this empty shell right there. We got the hose that goes from the drain pump to the drain hose. And obviously we got the drain hose still hooked up back there. So what I'll do is I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and crush the cell the shell, I should say, and take it to the recycling center. I got a recycling center that will take metal here in town, so that will not go to the waste either. All right, so the washing machine is completely disassembled. To do a quick recap, we got the transmission right here, the agitator, the main drain hose, the drain pump outlet hose, the drain pump itself, the shift actuator, or the mode shifter, it's also called the mode shifter, the transmission pulley, the clutch and spring, the drive motor, the belt, the inner tub, and the skirting that goes, or the outer tub and the skirting that goes around it. Here we have the wiring harness, the lid lock mechanism, suspension rods, belt cover, outer tub, and the casing right here, which is not all that important. And the brains behind the whole operation, the console, which has the main control board in it. So if you found this video to be helpful, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the thumbs up sign. I think I left out the valves and the motor capacitor as the last two major components of the this GE top load washing machine.